Jack Teixeira is white male Christian and anti-war. That makes him an enemy to the Biden regime. And he told the truth about troops being on the ground in Ukraine and a lot more. I mean, Tucker Carlson's kind of turning him into a hero. What, what do you make of that? Why? What they're suggesting will destroy America's ability to defend itself. That it's okay to release classified information uh, based on your political views. That the ends justify the means. It is not okay. If you're a member of the military intelligence community and you disagree with American policy and you think you're going to be okay when it comes to leaking classified information, you're going to go to jail. There is no justification for this. And for any member of Congress to suggest it's okay to leak classified information because you agree with the cause is terribly irresponsible and puts America in uh, serious danger. Some people are describing Lindsey Graham's response to Marjorie Taylor Greene's uh, text there about this Pentagon leaker that leaked some classified top secret information um, uh, as, you know, uh, he's firebrand. He threw things at her. He was vehement about it. I've seen him vehement. He's usually begging for money when he's vehement. But he is in disagreement with Marge and her thoughts about this leaker. And he didn't hold back. Uh, we can at least say that part. Uh, again, let's look at the tweet uh, that uh, he was upset about that actually uh, the, tel the Sunday show then brought up for him. The part I just want to point out, <clears throat> obviously, the obvious part that uh, Jake Teixeira is white male Christian and anti-war. So that's why he's an enemy of the Biden regime. It's a constant drumbeat of this, uh, of this propaganda pushed on certain folks being the victims throughout our society. And here comes this one particular political figure that's coming after him. So therefore get mad at everyone else who doesn't hate the guy, more division, more hate, more fear, and more violence on, uh, on the horizon, as she points out, ask yourself who is the real enemy? An enemy, she's pointing out, as she's talking about fellow Americans. So she wasn't very happy with uh, Lindsey Graham's approach to this whole thing and talked about how it's dangerous, but he was more focused on the problems with uh, uh, these leakers feeling they could have uh, a level of, I guess, popularity when they do things like this. That was his concern. Marjorie Taylor Greene's uh, concern uh, was, uh, the fact that Lindsey Graham decided to even respond. So she responded with a tweet of her own. Let's look at this. So I don't have these on my screen, you guys. Let's see this. So there's uh, there's uh, Lindsey Graham hanging out with uh, Dana Bash. I'm not sure how old that picture is, but look at that Bud Light can, quote unquote, in his hand. Uh, so apparently that's the one with uh, Dylan Mulvaney, the, uh, uh, the, the trans woman who has now got everyone so upset on the Republican side. And apparently this is a response Apparently, she didn't say much else to uh, Lindsey Graham's opposition to her talk about this leaker. So see if you can come up with some kind of connection to these two things. See if you can find a debate somewhere in this interaction. See if you can see some kind of thought process from Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about this. If nothing else, you know what this illustrates is the obvious approach that these folks have with politics now. And maybe it's always been this way and it's just more blatant and stupid. Because if someone criticizes things that you've said and done, just find a way to make them look bad with a fake image. That's where we've gotten. I thought this type of stuff maybe happened in third, fourth grade. You know, maybe someone is in the class and they're the nerd and you go, well, well, you've got four eyes. Like, this is our approach. These are elected officials now fighting over things this way. So only thing I'm looking forward to now as we go through more of this stuff, is that uh, there's another Republican that called her out. His name is uh, Representative Michael McCall. Maybe you haven't heard about him, but maybe Marge will have some Photoshopped image because he said similar things. Few Republicans right now, uh, Mr. Chairman, that have been defending Teixeira and his actions. Marjorie Taylor Greene is among them. Do you see anything to defend here? No, no, I, I don't. I don't. Uh, he, he's not a... Anybody that violates their oath to protect national security and intelligence, uh, you know, this classified information is not a hero. Uh, just the opposite. I mean, he's jeopardized American lives on the ground. Uh, you know, when you're reporting about Russian Federation intelligence of the GRU, there are assets on the ground now, American lives put at risk. They're very concerned about this leak and what it means for their safety. Uh, this probably a 
possible uh, uh, debate to be had when people leak information and they're trying to expose things and make sure the American people know stuff like this, Jess. Uh, but we just don't have that anymore. Honestly, if you want to read about all the details, of what does it happen? And then Marge's reasons for doing this and then Lindsay's response, you won't really come to a good conclusion because this is where the fight leads us. Yeah, I mean, we have members of Congress that write on Twitter more than they write legislation. That's what's at the core of the problem here. You're right that they're acting like this is third grade. You're members of the same party. You disagree with each other. We used to have debates on the floor of Congress about policy matters. Marjorie Taylor Greene, if you don't like how we protect whistleblowers, if you don't like how people are leaking information that maybe you believe should be public information, guess what? You can write legislation to change how we handle situations like this. You can write legislation so that we have more transparency into what the Pentagon's up to. You can make it so that we don't give the Pentagon more money until they actually pass an audit, which they haven't for very many years. It's just ridiculous that you have people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert as well this week taking to Twitter. Lauren Boebert was writing that Pete Buttigieg is running the rail industry like a kid learning how to play with the toy train set. It makes sense that you're upset we've had many derailments, but you're a member of Congress. All of you guys, you can write legislation instead of tweets, but they would rather be elected to be someone who has a lot of fun and says crazy things and makes memes and goes on Fox News. We're not electing people to have a media circus. We're electing people to actually pass legislation and make public policy for us. They're not doing that, and they haven't been for quite some time. And I think there's a reason why you have researchers at MIT and the like studying the United States saying, actually, the majority of people uh, according to our definition of what a third world country is, they're living in third world country conditions. But as Jared pointed out, the way they're acting, maybe we're a third grade country, not a third world country, uh, but it's a mess. 100%. Yo, uh, um, so anytime we've had this emotionally stunted uh, approach to our politics, even folks who maybe want that type of approach, you said we want uh, legislators that will represent us. So we elect people to do smart things and maybe legislate when the, when the problem comes up. Yes, that's what we're supposed to be doing, but what we've determined and seen now is because as they've acted on this in this manner and then they get elected, maybe even again, that's confirmation to them. So it starts with us and it starts with how much we're we're have this drumbeat of stupidity, ignore education, ignore information. If the information disagrees with your original thought process, oh my God, it must be the evil of the other side. All of that is just to dumb people down to, to listen to one to two to five people that they think are on their side, when in reality, they're using you. But there's no convincing someone that they're being used, no matter how detrimental uh, these decisions and these approaches to their life really are. Uh, we'll continue to have these stupid conversations where then Dylan Mulvaney on the side of a Budweiser can is the biggest damn thing that an entire political party cares about. I mean, on the surface, because what they actually do care about is hoarding money and power. That's what they're doing. And they're very serious about that.